So today we're continuing good and bad design. So there's a site you can check out um, on your own, but I took a couple of images from there with bad designs. And you have this shampoo and hand lotion and the containers look so similar that you could end up using one instead of the other. Um, the one that drives me the most crazy because it happens to me all the time is the flash drive where you put it in one side, it doesn't work. You switch the side and you're like, you know, which is the side that goes in? I don't know if that happens to you guys, but it happens to me a lot where I'm like, it shouldn't, you know, it shouldn't take me a few times to turn it to see which way it goes. It should just go in. This is another one that also bothers me a lot with, um, and my kids are constantly getting like the zippers in their backpack stuck. And I'm always like trying to yank it out. And it's like, should I be spending my time, you know, fixing zippers? Um, and, you know, you can see this happening on coats too often. So I'm like, could there be a better design for a zipper that doesn't get stuck all the time? These are some other just additional funny designs that come up that people have seen. Um, like this RSVP, would you like chicken, beef, kids? So, it, you know, maybe there's a way it could be designed a little better. So good design helps people. It's a good user interface. But bad design, and we spoke a little bit about this last week, that bad design, um, you know, at minimum, it could be frustrating. So you have this digital camera and you have no clue how to use it, or you don't know all the features, or you're frustrated by it. But then you have... Um, cases where it could be dangerous, a bad design of an airplane. So it can, you can have more severe um, results. And we'll talk about that today. So people don't want, want in at the minimum, you don't, you don't want to waste your time figuring things out. You want something that's easy, a good design that's invisible, automatic. We don't notice it. We accomplish our task. Great. So now <laughs> on Saturday, January 13, 2018, and that semester I was teaching HCI, so it was actually perfect for my class. But what happened in Hawaii, and I don't know how many of you remember, but there was an emergency alert sent out to everybody in Hawaii. And it's a, a missile threat was coming. And it said, this is, you know, seek immediate shelter. This is not a drill. It says it at the end of the message. This is not a drill. So of course the whole state is panicking because if you got a message like this, you'd be panicking. And um, and everyone, what they got it on their phones, they were all panicking and, and trying to find shelter. And it turned out it was a mistake. Um, what happened, they were supposed to be sending, an employee was supposed to be doing a test that wouldn't have actually sent it, sent it to the public. Um, and was, they were supposed to select drill but they accidentally selected the option that doesn't say drill. So because they made a mistake, a human a human error, you would say, oh, like the human, the person, or the, you know, the user made a mistake. They were supposed to select drill, they selected this. Um, okay, that's one way to look at it. So would you look at it as a human error or a bad design? Well, what does our friend Don Norman say? So we all remember Don Norman and on Twitter or now we would call it X, Don Norman says as fake missile attack warning, human error, nonsense. It's incompetent design. One wrong click terrorizes the entire state. Why is it possible? I have a book they need to read. So this is where you can look at it as human error. The person made a mistake. They were supposed to like drill, but also should they be able to make a mistake like like that? Or is it a bad design? Because maybe you shouldn't have a design that you click the wrong thing. And you're like, oops, I made a mistake. I clicked the wrong thing. And now it like terrorizes an entire state. Maybe that maybe that's not the right design. And that's one of these examples where a bad design can have a more severe consequence. So, okay, so Don Norman, we know we know what what he thinks. So they did add a false alarm option after. So at least they could go and say, 
false alarm, you know, and, and then send that message. So that was added. But but of course, the, um, the system obviously would need a redesign and then maybe at minimum, maybe it should be, are you, I don't know if it had, are, are you sure you really want to do that and, and, and send those? But, or or at least a redesign. So it's different colors, much more obvious. Um, but, um, but, and that's something to, to think about how it could have been redesigned. Um, but there, but there was a false alarm option getting added. So another thing that happens a lot is people might think they want to delete something and then all of a sudden realize, shoot, I just deleted something I needed. So when you make designs, you need to make a way that the user, knowing that they're going to make mistakes, nothing should be like completely irreversible. There should be a way to get it back. So in this little example, user, remove file, my most important work, computer, are you sure you want to do that? User, yes. Computer, are you sure? User, yeah. Computer, okay, it's removed. And user, oops. So, you know, make 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 their way. I mean, and, and a lot of times in your computer, you guys might have had like a homework assignment and then you deleted it accidentally, forgot, you know, save it. And that's really frustrating. Um, but if there's ways, I know like I use Dropbox for everything and they're, at least things are backed up. And um, I mean, even Word is sometimes good with backing things up a little bit, but if you have you know, you know, some traffic, like, so there, and, and, but, but, but there's still times where, and even like, like word will say, are you sure you want to delete this? You didn't save this. It will try. So um, it's just keeping in mind that people will make mistakes and they will want to be able to get back what they did. Now we spoke a little bit about this last time that bad design is sometimes intentional so in this option, why is it that pay with bank account is colored and pay with credit card is dimmed out? Does anybody have a thought? Yes, because if you use your credit card, they have to pay a fee. So they get, you know, it's, it's, it's not the same. A bank account is what everyone always wants you to, to use. So they made a bad design where you think it's a bad design because these should be two equal, equal colors. <laughs> but instead, they gray it out. So you automatically choose the other option, which is the option they want you to choose. So it's not as good of a user experience, but it's intentional because they don't want to have to pay a fee. So they're sacrificing user experience, which in your user experience, it should be equal, but they want to get more profit. Now, there, there is a lot like called dark patterns, deceptive patterns, and you'll start noticing that we, we, we touched upon this last time too, where sometimes websites or apps will do something you don't want to do, will make you do something you don't want to do and make you fall for it. Um, and... And, and it's frustrating um, and not a good design, but they do it intentionally. I don't know how many of you have ever fallen for this, but I have the disguised ads where you see you're trying to download software and then an ad pops up and it says download. So you click on it thinking it's the software <laughs> you're trying to download. And then you just like, you know, got the ad that you didn't want, but you thought you were downloading your software. So that's like also this dark pattern that, the ad, they're doing it intentionally. They know you're trying to download software. So the ad is now the word download in big. And, 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 you know, and of course, from a design point of view, that's wrong. That's bad design. But from the ad point of view, great. We got you to click and, and, and take it. So we win. So, so that's what these dark patterns are. And I have some students like doing research on this and even in the financial realm, how people fall for these dark patterns and, um, and 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 you might have people who are older users who might fall for it even more than younger users. So these are are you know just a big topic to explore. Um, Amazon, you have it. May, they make it really difficult to close out your account, and you might have to do so many clicks till you find it. That's intentional. They know how to make a good site where you cl click buy and you can buy now, and and that that's one big click right on anything, and you could hit buy. Um, you know, so that's intentional that it's you know you have to find how to close out your account. Uh, LinkedIn, you, you know, I, I mentioned this last time too, that it was so easy to, um, to at some point they wanted to get all your email contacts. So it like kind of tricked you into getting all your email contacts. And, you know, and, and there's so many companies. And if you go on the site that I have on the bottom, it will show you different tricks that a lot of the companies use. Um, and it's you You might say, oh, it's poor design. And it is poor design, but it's intentional poor design. And that's what dark patterns are or didn't fall for.
Okay. So we have two kind of errors that people can make, slips and mistakes. So what's the difference? They both sound like the same type of word, slip and mistake. So a slip is something that it, you intend to do one thing, but you do something else. I I accidentally pressed the, oops, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. I slipped, you know? So it's a slip. Mistake. I, I actually thought I was supposed to <laughs> press that, but I pressed the wrong thing um, because it was designed so poorly. So that's a mistake. And there's design ways to, to improve your design so that people don't make slips and mistakes. So slip is improve the visual design. You can spread things out. You can make, the, make things bigger. Um, and this way, it's harder for people to slip and click the wrong thing. For a mistake... You make things clearer, clarify what it's possible to do. So this way people won't make a mistake. I'm going to show you an example of something. And I want you to tell me if, if it's going to be a slip or a mistake. So here in this example, I'm not telling you if it's a slip or a mistake because I want you guys to tell me. Um, this is uh, the 2000 election and you might have heard about it um, or, um, or remember about it. So in the 2000, we had um, Bush versus Gore. And Bush was the Republican uh, nominee and Gore was on the Democratic side. And in Florida, this is how the ballot looked. And you so if you click the first button, you're, you're obviously clicking Bush. But what if you want to click Gore and you want to vote, for, you're in Florida and you want to vote for Gore, which button should you press? The second or the third? So it looks like you should press the third, which is actually what, what, what you're supposed to. But And if you press the second, it's Pat Buchanan on the right, um, who, who is in, you know, who's a Pat, Pat Buchanan, you can see. But a lot of people were going in and they don't want Bush, so they click the next button for Gore. Um, because you can see how in this design, if you don't want Bush, you'll be like, oh, let me do the one under it, the Democratic one, Gore. And... A lot of people did this. So many people did this, in fact, that Bush ended up winning the election. And had this not happened, Gore would have won the election. But Gore lost Florida. And all of a sudden, Pat Buchanan got the, all of these extra, so many votes. And, and they realized why, but but it was too late. So Bush became president. Um, and And a lot of it was due to this design. Because it looks like if I'm in Florida and I don't want Bush, I'm like, okay, let me press, press the next one, the one under it. I see Gore's right under it. Let me click that. Um, so Buchanan got a lot of extra votes. So is this an example of a slip or a mistake? Yeah. So the answer is it's a mistake because they didn't say, oops, I clicked the wrong one. Oh, no. What, did I, what do I do? They actually left the vote, voting house. They left it and thought they voted for Gore. So it was a mistake because they didn't think they did anything wrong. They didn't like slip, they didn't whatever, but the design is poor. And maybe you'll say, well, they should have paid more attention because the second one is closer to Pat Buchanan and the third one is closer to Gore. Maybe, but should they have to pay that much attention, especially when Gore is right under it? And most people, most votes are really between Gore and Bush. So you would think the first would be Bush, the second would be Gore, and who the others, you know, the others you should pay attention to if you want to select, because those are, you know, the less common ones. So the design could be better. The design could be better, and it could be a lot better. Um, you shouldn't have to think, because you do have to think. You do have to think here, yeah, and maybe some people got it right. Well, it's easy if you're voting for Bush, but if you're voting for Gore, I'm sure some people got it right, but you shouldn't have to think that hard. And that's why a lot of people made that mistake because they didn't think that hard. And they're like, okay, I don't want Bush. Let me do Gore. So, um, and it wasn't Gore. <laughs> so it was Pat Buchanan and and Bush ended up winning the state and then won the election because of that. So it's a very, fr that that kind of error can cause, you know, a, more, a bigger, um, you know, like that, could, you know, we're talking about some things that are more minor. This could be a more, a major. And of course it's hard to know for sure, but it seems to be that, you know, that's what happened. Um, so yeah, but it's definitely a mistake, not a slip because they did not realize it and actually thought they were doing the correct thing. So in the, going back to the case of the voting ballot, um, 
what could we do? Well, one thing we could do is have a better, a consistent design. Like right now, every state, you know, does its own design and some of them are less, are not as good as other states. So what if we had a universal, uh, a nationwide standard? Maybe that would be better. And I did have um, a group, because I know I mentioned there's a group project and one group one semester decided to work on a um, nationwide app for voting and um you know it was and it was and they wanted to have something that was a good design it was on an app base everyone can do it and that was what their group worked on for the semester so that's not a bad idea thinking about a good design that everyone can use so when all else fails standardize now, this is an example of a backwards clock. How many of you have ever seen that? I, I had a friend growing up who's a lefty. So she had this clock because she thought because she's a lefty, she thought it was fun. So she just, I mean, it was more as a fun thing, like hanging up in her room. And um, obviously you have a lot of trouble telling time, but why? Because we're not used to it. It's not the standard. So Really, when all else fails, we we standardize. Um, while technically this could be a good design of a clock, why not? But it makes no sense for us because our our brains, uh, we're so used to it, seeing it the other way. So it's not standard to us. So I, you know, I, I, I mean, I loved going to my friend's house and just looking at it and trying to figure out the time because it was really set to the actual time. But um, but obviously it was more of a joke than than real because no one's going to use anything like this. So this is another Don Norman challenge. He posted on Twitter, can you design the most awful volume control? Because he was linking to the site of bad volume controls um, and said, can you design the most awful volume controls? So if you go, if we go here, you can see um, someone you know, they created really, sometimes it's like fun just to create something so bad. So obviously it's not real, just a joke, but you can see um, the slingshot. Let's bring another example. Please make noise as loud as you want the volume to be. Now listening. Here, look at this one sideways. I always, um, I'm tempted to divide you guys in groups and say design something really bad because that takes talent too, to, to try to do something that's like really horrible. But, but there's more and you can look at this on your own. Um, but actually I do want to show you, let me bring up another site, which I like even more for bad phone number entries. Cause you know, when you're doing forms and you have to put a phone number. So I think this site is really fun where there's bad, where do I get to the next one? <laughs> I saw the next, you see, this is bad design. I saw the next button I'm clicking next. And I've, and I've been on this site before, but I think because I'm sharing my screen, usually I see more. And so I just click the top next button. Okay. So I'm, I'm already falling for bad design, but here, enter your phone number. I like this one with the numbers plus, 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 trying to get to your number, your phone number. So this is also like, you know, would be a fun challenge. Design something really like as horrible as you can. All right. But but those anyway, those are cute sites that I left there that you can look at. Let's go back. Okay, so now we have input devices. On a computer, often you use a mouse um, and it's an, or, and laptops. Now, sometimes, of course, you don't use your, ma your mouse for a laptop, but, but you do have this mouse option for input. But on a mobile device and a tablet, you mainly, and I know it's not 100% because you could have a laptop where you use your finger, but just generally speaking, so you have, um, you know, let's say you're using your mouse for your computer and for a mobile device and a tablet, you use your finger because that's the input device, not a mouse. So my question for you, we're going to go to the poll and you're going to tell me which is better. 
Okay. So why, why does it depend? So there's, there are a lot of advantages to your finger. There's, there's no learning time. I mean, look at, you know, if you, if you see a kid and they're learning how to use a mouse, they have to learn how to use a mouse. It's not easy to do, but you don't have to learn how to use your finger because you kind of already know how to use it. You don't have to carry something around. Um, it's a little more fun and engaging because you can press, it seems more interactive to use your finger. But there's advantages of a mouse. There's a lot of like high precision. You don't have like the, the does anyone know what the fat finger problem is? Yeah. So a fat finger problem is like, let's say you're you're on a, you have an app and you have a couple of icons and they're, you know, maybe very small or, or very close together. And you accidentally press one, you're, you're, you're pressing one, but it thinks you're pressing another. And it's called the fat finger problem because a mouse is, is not fat. A mouse is like very, very thin and exactly like, you know, it has high precision. It's going to click exactly what you want. But your finger might accidentally click something else because it's a little thicker than a mouse. So that's what the fat finger problem is when you accidentally can click something else. So that's why a mouse is a little better for, for that precision. Um, you can also have a right click on a mouse. You can have a hover on a mouse. Those are things your finger does not have um, necessarily. Um, it doesn't obscure view of the screen. Your finger will hide part of the screen. So there are advantages to a mouse and there are advantages to your finger.